Uh, what is your uh, NRA rating? I have an A rating, uh, and that came from my voting record in the State Senate. Those were hard votes. Uh, I served with Dave Wheeler when we were both in the State Senate back in the 90s, and uh, uh, I took some tough votes. And remember where I came from, a very liberal district that does not like guns where I live. So those were hard votes. You can fill out survey forms, which I've done. Those are easy until you break promises on the surveys. And I differ with my opponent, Kelly Ayotte, who promised to be a pro-constitutionalist. And uh, I should tell you about her gun record. In 2006, when she was Attorney General, she stood next to Governor John Lynch at the time. He was a Democratic governor. He vetoed a Stand Your Ground bill in 2006. And Kelly Ayotte stood next to him celebrating the veto of Stand Your Ground. In 2006, Kelly Ayotte authored an amicus brief arguing that according to the New Hampshire Constitution, there is no right to constitutional carry. She opposes constitutional carry. She opposes stand your ground. She voted on both sides in Manchin Toomey. This is 2013 when she was in the U.S. Senate uh, and allowed a debate on anti-gun amendments uh, to Manchin Toomey. Uh, and just recently, this is very recently, she has voted uh, with Dianne Feinstein, Senator Dianne Feinstein of California, to give Loretta Lynch, the Attorney General, who, by the way, Kelly I voted to confirm. That's right. Yeah, yeah, right? That's right. Yeah. She voted to give Loretta Lynch the power, using an ambiguous, unarticulated set of standards, to put anyone that uh, Loretta Lynch doesn't like on a no-gun list. Kelly Ott argues that you can get off the no-gun list if you can put together $10,000 or $100,000 and go down to a Boston kangaroo court and get your rights back again. So you are found guilty as a result of Loretta Lynch putting you on a no-gun list for criteria that are unknown, and you can get back out if you front a whole bunch of money. You can get your money back if the government uh, gives you back your, uh, your gun rights again. This is wrong. We are innocent until proven guilty. And if a terrorist, the, uh, the objective is to keep uh, terrorists from hurting people, if a terrorist is, if there's evidence that they are a terrorist, evidence they're about to commit a terrorist-related crime or are conspiring on one, then you use the Fourth Amendment. You go before a judge, you demonstrate probable cause, the judge allows law enforcement to investigate, and if the investigation results in the finding of a crime, you arrest that person and put them in jail. You don't take guns away from innocent American citizens. And by the way, I didn't, this is the last part of keeping America safe. Okay? Kelly Ayotte uh, did this Loretta Lynch, Dianne Feinstein, anti-gun vote just a few weeks, what is it, three weeks ago maybe? She did this to keep us safe from terror, okay? Here's how we can keep us safe from terror. Uh, safe from terror. The Second Amendment was authored specifically so that American citizens can keep ourselves safe against enemies domestic opera domestically operating on, on U.S. soil. That, that amendment is there specifically so that law-abiding, peace-loving citizens can own and use firearms to keep self, family, property, and community safe. And what we should do <laughs> instead of that approach, the anti-gun approach, is to end the no-gun zones, the gun-free zones, that these terrorists, specifically in San Bernardino and Orlando, Florida, they seek out gun-free zones to wreak their havoc, destruction, and death, and murder. And there would be a lot less of it if there were fewer gun-free zones. I would not have any federal law. To, uh, to, to force anyone to do anything, but people should voluntarily use those constitutional rights under the Second Amendment to encourage their boss, their school, their bar, to defend their customers, defend their patrons, freely and voluntarily. I would not have a federal law compelling this, but that right is in the Constitution so that we can defend ourselves against enemies. That's why it's in the Constitution. This incumbent is exactly wrong, exactly wrong on this approach to defending us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. Did, did you see James O'Keefe's videos about uh, trying to persuade people to put uh, gun-free zone signs on their property? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Well, these are the ones who've been shouting loudest about. Right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a re is that a recent one? Yeah, he's yeah. done another one recently. Oh, yeah. He yeah. visited the offices of the Congress <laughs> congressmen <laughs> and women <laughs> that had made <laughs> right. the the Lost. city and ask those staffers if they or their bosses who right. felt so strongly would put a 
gun free zone sign in their office window or on their own lawns. Mm. Oh, they yeah. all refused to a man or woman. I didn't see that in the news. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a, a little data point. Uh, since 1950, if you look at the data on all mass uh, killings using a firearm, three, three or more killings, all of them but three, all of them but three happened in gun free zones since 1950. So, American citizens, no government law is required to do this because the law is already there to protect our right to use firearms in, in defense of ourselves. But we would simply, those of us who defend this right to defend ourselves, should encourage people, defend their patrons. Schools, defend your school. Schools and colleges should definitely have yeah. staff members armed. Trained, certified, yeah. responsibly, responsible, yeah. law-abiding, mentally stable people to defend patterns, defend, yeah. defend schools, uh, 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 children, defend uh, patterns in a movie theater, uh, and these terrorists will uh, will be defeated in that fashion. Mm -hmm. The police can't get there for ten or twenty minutes in some cases, right. and some of these, exactly. the, some of this havoc is wreaked in minutes. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you need individuals there. There was a case uh, in in the Colorado in Colorado. I think this was 2013. Uh, there was a school, uh, and, a, and a, uh, a shooter came into a school, walked into the front door, did manage to kill a single person, an armed individual, uh, at a distance of about 80 feet, approached with a firearm. Uh, the perpetrator aimed the gun at his own head, killed himself. A single person died, plus the perpetrator. So killings were reduced as a result of this school having self-defense, having defense. Yeah. Anybody else? What, how do you feel about the issue about the refugees being brought into America when we have homeless people that need help? Yeah. Well, we have uh, <laughs> we we have got to we've got to cut off the magnet. Okay, mm -hmm. you got to seal the border. There should be no welfare or benefits for illegal aliens. It, it, it sounds hard and cruel, but the illegal aliens need to stay in their country and resolve their political issues. Whether it's Honduras and other places, these are hell holes. But to create escape valves where they come into America and get welfare illegally uh, just leaves the problems in Honduras unchanged. Uh, so sanctuary cities, no. Uh, Ayat voted for sanctuary city money. Uh, she voted for Obama's uh, executive amnesty. Uh, these are all wrong. We should shut off. It's now, not the necessarily illegal aliens. Is, but President Bush agreed to accept 65,000 people from Bhutan. I mean, yeah, would well, Congress have any say in those? Are, the those, Senate I think, Congress? tend to be peace loving people. Uh, yeah, but still, yeah. I mean, right. 65,000 people right. being brought yeah. into a community. Yeah. Some of these communities have actually tried to find out yeah. how they were selected to get right. these refugees. Yeah. I mean, if you talk to Mayor Gatsis in Manchester, he right. says the, 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 the people arrive from Somalia and elsewhere, there's no notice whatsoever. Mm. They're given a small stipend of money, and then the entire responsibility to support people whose families and children speak no English, have no, ca no capacity to get into the work environment immediately, are dumped onto communities without any warning whatsoever. So this is, <laughs> this is horrible. This is perpetrated by our federal government. This needs to change. Plus, we need to not accept, as, as Jimmy Carter did in 1979, we need to not accept refugees from countries known to husband terror or known not to have uh, effective documentation systems. This is in the self-defense of Americans. These are some of the things we, we need to do that are different than the incumbent is doing, different than Obama's doing, to keep us safe. So there are things we can do to keep us safe that don't require taking our constitutional rights away. A lot of things, in fact, everything that, that, that we can do to keep ourselves safe requires taking away none of our constitutional mm -hmm. rights. Any more questions? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I uh, appreciate you folks very much. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Jim. <laughs>